when you are pen testing a web application, you come across different types of functionalities and one of the functionality is password reset. So in this video, we are going to explore different ways in which you can test the password reset functionality. To understand these vulnerabilities, you first need to understand what is host header injection. So let's talk about HTTP host header. If you access any website and if you capture the request in your web suite, you will see a request like this and one of the headers it will have is the host header. So the host header contains the domain name that the client wants to access. Now why a host header is needed? Host header is needed because of two reasons mainly. First is virtual hosting and the second is because of reverse proxies or CDNs. Now virtual hosting allows a single server to host multiple websites using the same IP address. So in this case, if the host header is there in the request, it tells the server which specific website the client is trying to access. It helps in routing. And then in setups like load balancers or reverse proxies or CDNs, the host header helps the system determine which backend server to route the traffic to. So it basically helps in finding the direction. For example, there is a street and on the street there is an apartment with the multiple room numbers. Now the host header tells which room number the person wants to go to. Because the apartment is same right but the room number is different. I hope it's making sense. Okay, so what is HTTP host header attack? HTTP host header attacks exploit vulnerable websites that handle the value of the host header in an unsafe way. So attacks that involve injecting a payload directly into the host header are often known as host header injection. So maybe you are getting the idea now why it is important to understand in case of password reset poisoning. One of the basic attacks you can come across using this vulnerability is, let me increase the size. So what happens here is there is a password reset functionality in the web application and then you click on the password reset. Once you click on it, you get redirected to the password reset page. And then the user types a new password and then you can go back to the login and uh, try to log in. Of course, there could be some other functionalities here as well, like you're supposed to add OTP to verify the user, some other two FAs. But let's assume there is a simple functionality like this in three steps. If you're testing a password reset functionality, you'll first intercept a request here. And then you'll get a request something like this. API password reset and then the host. In normal case scenario, the host will be the name of the domain itself. Let's say facebook.com or example.com. But in this case, you're going to change the host value to the malicious domain that you control. So while testing, you can use the interact sh client to test for this. If you don't know what interact sh is, let me show you this GitHub repo. It's gonna basically help you if you don't want to host your own domain and go through that trouble. So you just have to install this tool and then you will run the command interact sh hyphen client and then it will start a server for you and it will give you a random domain name something like this and then you can put it in the host header value once you put it in the host header value you can just send a request and if you see a log here along with your password reset token then a vulnerability exists there there is a password reset poisoning vulnerability through host header injection because you're able to put any random host and you will receive the password reset link so as you can see it says recent link in logs of the malicious.com in this case interact as such client so moving on to method number one which is password reset poisoning by x forwarded for header x forwarded for header is used to track the original ip address of a user if it's going through some kind of reverse proxy so this is how the header looks like and if you scroll down a bit here it says uh, when a client connects directly to a server, the client's IP address is sent to the server and is often written in the server logs. But if a client connection passes through any forward or reverse proxies, the server only sees the final proxy IP address, which is often of little use. And that's why to provide the client more useful IP address to the server, X forwarder for request header is used. So sometimes this header is used to create absolute URLs for password reset links. 
and that's why it can be used to exploit the password reset functionality. Let's have a look at this blog. So if I scroll down, you can see that this is the password reset request for the user and it has the username Carlos and the X forwarded host header and the X forwarded host header contains the attacker controlled domain. In this case, it's the exploit server. You can try to solve this lab in both figure. I'll provide the link in the description. This link will be sent to the victim user and if the victim users click on it, a request will be sent to the exploit server with the password reset token. And this is how the logs will look like in the backend. In your case, you can of course use the interact sh client and you will get a log similar to this with the password reset token. Then you can just paste this URL in the browser and from there you can reset the password of another user. And the scenario we looked previously, you can read a report on that as well, which is this one, password reset link hijacking via host header poisoning. Okay, so you visit the forget password page and from there you enter the victim email address and capture the reset link. There you change the host header value to your malicious site. As you can see, it says the victim then receive a password reset email with the poison link and if the victim clicks on the link, the reset token will be leaked and the attacker will be able to find the reset token in the server logs. So yeah, it does require the user interaction here, but it is still critical. Moving on to method number two, that is parameter pollution leads to password reset poisoning. First, what is parameter pollution? It is a security vulnerability where an attacker manipulates or injects multiple parameters with the same name in an HTTP request to bypass security controls. Let's give this blog a read for better understanding. So this is another scenario of HTTP parameter pollution. I'm just going to explain this to you real quick. There is a functionality in the login page and it asks for OTP to login. So there are some applications that basically takes an email and if you type the OTP, you can just log in. It's very simple. So when you tap the email, you click send one time password and then you intercept the request. And this is how the request looks like. It's using post HTTP method for auth login and it has email ID parameter. So what this tester has done is he added two email IDs over here. The first one is the victim ID and the second one is the attacker's control ID. So the application is going to prioritize sending OTP to the second ID, which is the attacker's control. Why? Because this is how parameter pollution works. It depends on what kind of technology the backend is using and based on that, it prioritizes which parameters it's going to give more importance to, either the first or the second. If I think he added this screenshot here, yeah he did. Over here you can see PHP and Apache gives more importance to the last occurrence missed the second parameter and the JSP gives more importance to the first parameter. So first you have to identify what technology the application is using and based on that you can try testing for parameter pollution. So in this case the user is just trying to bypass the login page by tapping in the ODP that he received in its own controlled email that leads to account takeover. Back to our little diagram, the steps remain the same. First you click on the password reset and then you intercept the request. And in the request, there is the email address to which the password reset link will be sent to. In that case, you can add another email address based on the technology if it's vulnerable and check if you can receive the password reset link in your own controlled email. So in this case, the person whose password you want to change is a victim at example.com and we are going to receive the email at medusa at example.com and once you get the password reset link you can just add it to the url and change the password from there so this is the simple flow keep this in your checklist whenever you're testing for password reset poisoning moving to the last method we're gonna cover in this video is password reset token leakage via refer header the refer header tells a website where the request is coming from, so it helps track navigation that can be used for analytics, security, or debugging. Let's have a look at this report to understand this better. 
So this guy has reported AwanMDT where he has found that if the user opened the link of a reset password and then click on an external link within the reset password page, it leaks password reset token in the refer header. So these are the steps to reproduce. First, you open the password reset page from email and then you click on the social media link on below so there must be some little icons on the page then you intercept the request in the perp suite and you check if the refer header has the password reset link in it so he added an image as well let's have a look as you can see the refer header here is leaking the password reset token let me increase the size now you'll be able to see the hash parameter over here has a random value and then the email so the password reset token belongs to this particular email. This is another report that I came across. So go to this particular URL to change the password and then you enter your email and then you click on the password reset. You go to your email and there you click on the password reset link and on the password reset page, click on any social media links given below and then capture the request from Burp Suite. So this was the request in this case and over here you can see the refer header contains the password reset link which can be used to reset the password of other users. Okay so that sums up this video. I hope you liked watching it and I'm going to provide all the resources link in the description so do check them out. Let me know your views in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.